We are covering 1-8, which, which is about transformations. So our learning target is apply transformations to points and sets of points, interpret transformations of real-world data. All right, what is a transformation? We looked at this last year. Transformation is a change in the posi position, size, or shape of a figure. We're looking, we're going to be looking at some specific transformations pretty much all year. And we're starting with this unit so we can start to get a handle on them. They can be a little bit confusing. By the end of the year, we'll have been doing them all year. So hopefully by then, we'll have the, the hang of it. Translation or slide is a transformation that moves a point in a figure the same distance in the same direction. So this is like a horizontal slide or a vertical slide. When you translate left or right, the x-coordinate changes and when you translate up or down, the y coordinate changes, which makes sense. X is your horizontal coordinate, left or right is horizontal uh, slide, up and down is a vertical slide. So here are some rules. Each point, horizontal translation, each point shifts right or left by the, a fixed number of units. So the x-coordinate changes, the y-coordinate does it here. It shows you if you shift three units to the right, you're going to add three to your x-coordinate. Here's the general rule, x plus h, y doesn't change. It goes right if h is greater than zero. If it's negative, it's going to be a subtraction and it's going to move it left. Vertical translation shifts everything up or down. Only the y-coordinate changes. Here's your general rule. So if you're going to vertical, do a vertical shift of k units, in the example they have the shift being two units up, you're going to add k to y, uh, to y. You go up if k is positive, down if k is negative. Perform the given translation on the point negative 3, 4. Give the coordinates of the translated point. Two units left and two units down. So this is a horizontal change, and this is a vertical change. A vertical change, actually, let me rewrite that. So ver a horizontal change they indicate with the H, a vertical with a K. So left means we're going to have a negative H. Down means we're going to have a negative K. So we take negative 3 and subtract 2 and we take 4 and subtract 2, and that gives us a new coordinate of negative 5, 2, which you can see here, but it's really hard to see. Okay, I would like you to perform the given translation on the point, point negative 1, 3, one unit left and two units down. This should be pr pretty straightforward. All right, the other types of transformations are reflections. And we can have two types of reflections, reflection across the y-axis and reflection across the x-axis. So when we, ref we reflect across the y-axis, it's actually a horizontal reflection because you're reflecting, your, your x-coordinates are, are changing. And so this kind of shows you what happens, your x-coordinates become negative. So if you had a negative 1, and reflect it across the y is going to be a positive one. If you have a positive one, it's going to be a negative. So it's the opposite sign. It's the opposite of the original. So the general rule is x becomes negative x and y stays the same. Flexion across the x-axis is actually a vertical. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but this is actually a vertical reflection because your y-coordinates are changing. And what happens, your y-coordinates just become negative. So if they were negative, they're now positive. If they were positive, they're now negative. Use a table to perform each translation of y equals f of x. Use the same coordinate plane as the original function. A translation two units up. So what you want to do is take some of the points I would take this point, anything that's kind of on a corner, this point, this point, this point, and this point. Those are the key points I would take. 
put them into a table. So negative 5, they actually did negative 5. They actually, I guess I should fix it so that it's there's. They actually took these points here, which is fine. You can take, you can choose, but you want any, of course, any place it changes, the graph changes directions, you're going to want to take that point. So we have negative 5, negative 3. We're moving it two units up, so that means this is going to be, you're going to add 2 to that, and this is our new y coordinate. Our x's remain unchanged. And then when we graph them, graph your key points and then fill the lines in. A reflection across the x-axis. So remember, x-axis, I always have to look at, look at it. x-axis is going to go this way. That means it's a vertical change. That means our y-coordinates are going to be made negative. So if we take those same key points and just give the opposite sign to these, we're going to end up with positive 3, 0, positive 2, 0, positive 3. And here is our reflected image. All right. So this would be one for you to try. Translation of three units, right? And you're going to want to take some key points. You can choose, but I would pick this one. I might pick something like that. Okay, so now we're going to go into stretches and compressions. These are a little trickier. So a stretch, a stretch and compression is basically the same thing. The only difference is the factor by which you're multiplying things by. So a stretch, horizontal stretch, it says each, each point is pulled away from the y-axis. That means it's going to take longer to move horizontally out. So here you can see that horizontally it's narrower on the original. With the stretch, it, it stretches out or it, it's fatter in the horizontal direction. A horizontal stretch is a lot like a vertical compression. You can see here vertically it looks like it's moving more quickly. So you'll probably understand that better as we get into the year, but so what happens, x-coordinate ch changes on a horizontal stretch as you would think, and you just multiply, you're going to multiply by some stretch factor. And you're going to see that this is a little bit tricky with a horizontal stretch in terms of what B is and how it changes how it stretches out horizontally. The absolute value, value of B has to be greater than 1, and so this is the difference between a horizontal stretch and compression. If B is between 0 and 1, then it's going to be a compression, so that means it's a fraction. That's the only difference between a stretch and compression, and I pretty much like to lump them together and just say a horizontal stretch, because if you have a stretch factor of one half. It's a horizontal stretch of one half, which you could also call a compression, but, and that's the only difference. You have your stretch factor. B is going to be a fraction. Okay, each point is pulled, oh, sorry. Now we're on to vertical. So you're pulling away from, on a stretch, you're pulling away from the x-axis. So you can see it's kind of moving up vertically faster on a stretch. And when it's a compression here, you're actually pushed toward the x-axis. You can see how this vertical uh, compression here looks kind of like a horizontal stretch and vice versa. Here's a horizontal compression here that looks a lot like a vertical stretch. And again, here, a so you're going to multiply your vertical, uh, your vertical coordinate by some factor. So compressions and stretches multiplying your x and y coordinates depending on whether it's a horizontal or vertical change. All right, use a table to perform the horizontal stretch of, the, of function y equals f of x by a factor of 3. Graph the function and the transformation and the transformed function. All right, so 
we want a stretch factor of 3, so we're going to multiply our x-coordinate by 3. Here's our original, here's our transformed, and you can see here this is our new graph for our stretched function. Okay, this one is a vertical stretch factor of 2, so we leave our x's alone and we're going to multiply our y's by 2, and this is what the new transformed function looks like. That wraps up this section. Bring questions to class, and this is your homework.